Hello, this is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to the channel today. I decided to film today while I kit up a new diamond painting. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's a great start, got a frog in my throat. Um, so this painting is in Santorini. Excuse the glare. And this is a round diamond painting by uh, Diamond Art Club. It's legally licensed art by the artist, and um, excuse my pronunciation, Evelo Nikolov, and it's 61 centimeters by 46 centimeters. So this is, for me, a small to medium painting. I tend to do quite large ones. So this is a, a little bit of a snack size painting. Um, and the other reason I'm kitting it up today is I do have three paintings on the way already, on the go already, but they're all squares and I like to have a bit of variety, so I'm kitting up around to mix things up. So I have already taken the painting out of the box, but I'll show you quickly what we have. So for anyone who's unfamiliar with a Diamond Art Club painting, you get a toolkit. This is the standard older toolkit. They are uh, gradually rolling out newer toolkits that give you an extra couple of bits and bobs, but this one does the job just fine. You get a sticker sheet. So I've got all of the colours of the painting with a nice sticky label that I can use to go on my storage containers. And a picture of the painting. I know some people like to put these in log books and that kind of thing. But to be honest, I don't do a lot with them. I just keep them. Um, but they're nice to have. I've got my drills, which I will be opening shortly. And let's show you the painting. Roll it back. So for anyone unfamiliar, Diamond Art Club use cord glue for their painting. And they have this, I can't do it now. They have this really great flexible canvas with a lovely soft back. And when you open it, if you're painting will not lie straight. You can either just leave it for a few minutes and that will do the job fine. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is just roll it back. It won't harm the glue because it's poured glue. You never do this with a double-sided adhesive canvas. And then, as you can see, that instantly lies quite a bit straighter. Okay, so I'll just show you the painting. It's very, very blue, <laughs> which is my favourite colour. And this painting reminds me of a wonderful family holiday three years ago for my parents' golden wedding anniversary when we went on a cruise around the Greek islands. And Santorini was the first place we visited. So really fond memories. Looking forward to working on this. So, without further ado, let's get on with kitting up. Okay, the first thing I like to do when I'm kitting up a painting is to take this sheet that I showed you with the stickers and run it through my, uh, my printer, which has a copier function. The reason that I do this is when I work on my paintings, I work on an easel and I turn it all which ways. So I work on it upside down, sideways. So I have to get used to reading the symbols at different angles. And having this as a movable key is quite helpful for that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my guillotine and just neaten that up. I love this gadget. It only cost me, I think, about five or six pounds on Amazon. And it's just really satisfying to get nice straight lines. So the next thing I need to do is decide which storage to use. Normally I figure this out in advance, um, but the problem I have, I, I like to use this style of container for Diamond Art Club where I can. 
Um, so these are Elizabeth Ward style containers. This is actually, <coughs> excuse me, a cheaper one that I got off AliExpress because here in the UK, to buy the Elizabeth Ward ones, you're talking about three or four times the cost of these and these work perfectly well. So I have three sets and I mix and match all the containers, but two containers worth are in use at the moment. So this is kind of like the dregs, <laughs> the leftovers I haven't used for those. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, this frog needs to get out of my throat. Um, so I do have enough in here because this painting has only got 40 colours, but I don't know if they're the right sizes. The reason I like this kind of container for Diamond Art Club is because of the different sizes. So if you've ever unkitted a Diamond Art Club painting before, you'll know that these drills, when I open them, they're going to be organised in order of number of drills rather than DMC colour. So what you can do is take the smallest drills, fill your smallest containers, and then move up. And it just works really neatly. And you're not always having to, to refill containers. Um, as you do if you have a smaller container and you can't fit all of the drill bag in. But I don't know if it's going to work out because I don't have any other options for containers. So the other kitting up option that I have today is this round bottle container storage system. And I do really like this. They're all the same size, they hold a good amount of drills. Big bags will not all fit in here. There's 60 and I only need 40, so I can possibly just keep the leftovers in, in extra drill pots. That's one thing to consider. Hmm. I'm waffling. Basically, what I need to do is open this bag of drills and see what we're dealing with, and then try and figure out what would be the best fit. So let's do that. I love how neat these packages feel. It's almost a shame to rip into it. And I never do until I'm ready to put the painting up. So this is the moment of no return. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you can see right away some quite big bags here. So these are going to be more drills than I can fit in those round containers. What else have we got? Okay. So this strip here. These are all small quantities of drills. And they would work fine in the smaller Elizabeth Ward style containers. And there's lots of them. Which is good because it's the larger ones that I'm a bit more limited on. Excuse the crinkling noises if you don't like them. <laughs> hmm. There's quite a lot of smaller ones. And what have we got here? So this is quite a big colour. So one thing you'll notice if you unbox a Diamond Art Club is the drill bags go in order of, of how filled the bag is. But some colours you might have more than one bag. So this amount of drills I guess was too many to go in one big bag. But that's probably more drills than we have in this one. So I've got two of this one, two of this one. So these would probably be in the bigger Elizabeth Ward style containers. That's with these. And the others, I think, would fit fine in the smaller ones I have there. I should say, by the way, this this, <laughs> this level of finickiness is not necessary because if I go for one particular container and all the drills from these bags don't fit in, I'm just going to put them in a little baggie to the side and top it up when necessary. I just, I'm fussy. I like to have it all in there if I can. 
Hmm. Undecided. You know what? I think I'm just going to go with the Elizabeth Ward style containers and, and yeah, we're just going to give that a go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the larger drill bags to one side because we'll kind of figure out how to deal with those when we get to them. If they don't need to be in one of the really big ones and they'll fit in a smaller one then I prefer to do that. So the easiest way is to work up through the smaller ones first. here for my rubbish and what I like to do is just have a drill tray and I will fill my containers over this so that any spill doesn't disappear into the cracks in my table well, that's the plan anyway <laughs> all right Let's start at the smaller end I'm just going to cut a few off going. So who else has done this painting? It's quite an old one I believe on the website. Um, and I just think it's gorgeous. I'm always surprised that I don't see more many more people doing it. Um, because I just think it's really pretty. So nine of five. These stickers only just fit on the smaller containers. So what I do is put them to the side. No. That won't fly. These newer sticky labels from Diamond Art Club from paintings in the last year or so they've made them less sticky so that you can generally just stick them right on the containers and they will peel up nice and easily without leaving residue it does also mean that they sometimes come up a bit when you don't want them to but it saves having to put washi tape on, which is a bit fiddly, particularly with the small containers. Got to get every last drill. I always check the catch before using them. I'm not sure what the, the proper Elizabeth Ward containers are like. I, I suspect they're probably better, but the one drawback with these cheaper ones is the catches can wear and then the lids will become loose. So I've got seven for two here. I'm not sure when I'm actually gonna start this painting sometime soon. I'm currently working on the second row of Island Time by Charles, Charles, Chuck Pinson, which is another Diamond Art Club painting. Um, and I may take a break from that after this row, I may do another row. I talk about it in rows because the way I work on my paintings is I have a uh, release paper covering a strip. Um, and I always work on them um, portrait mode, regardless of whether the painting is a landscape or a portrait, I have them on my easel that way, because I switch between paintings quite a lot, and I find if I want to put a painting away and work on a different one, and I'm going to roll it back up and store it in the box, it just, it all lies flatter and it seems to be less likely to crease if I've done it a whole row. So that there's no kind of weird tension in the canvas 
if that makes any sort of sense. I'm not convinced it does. <laughs> You see, I'm going to sort of vaguely sort the numbers as I go because I, I tend to keep them in the number order. Again, you don't have to do that, that's just me. This one, it could be either. I know it's 666 just because I recognise the colour. So yeah, I think I will either finish the row of island time I'm on and make a start on this or do another row and then make a start on this. I just kind of go with what I feel like doing at the time. Does anyone else find that sometimes when you pick up a new diamond painting, it's sort of like when you have to get into a book? I was really, really looking forward to Island Time. And I am really enjoying the painting and beautiful colours, don't get me wrong. But it's not like really, really gripped me yet. I find I'll work on a painting and I might be like, yeah, this is fine, this is, yeah, cool, whatever. And then the next time I'll pick up that painting after having a break to do something else, I'll get like really into it and super obsessed and want to work on it for ages. Just like when a book really grips you. I don't know if any of you are readers and you know what I mean when you just sort of feel the pull of the book and you're like, ah, yes, I can't put this down now. I find that really interesting. So then it comes and goes, <laughs> the paintings as I'm working on them. I finished Inspiration of Spring Meadows recently. And when I started it, I was obsessed. And then the whole middle section, it was kind of like, I'll do a row and then I'll have a break. I'll do a row and have a break because I think the sameness of the colours was getting to me, even though they were beautiful, but that's just a, a thing for me. I get bored of doing the same colours easily. Which does beg the question of how I'm going to feel about this painting. I'm just banking on it going quick enough for that not to be a problem. And the fact that I really like blue. Um, and then towards the end I got really into it again. And I got the last section done quite quickly. So, I don't know. Is that just me? Or is that what a lot of people feel like? 3801. So, I don't like to overfill these containers if I can manage it. If I have the capacity to put all the drills in containers where they've got plenty of space, then I will do that. So, what I'm going to do is put all of these smaller packets in the very small containers, and then I'm going to count up the bigger packs to see how many more of the really small containers I need to use, if that makes sense. Because I just find it's one drawback with these containers is that if they're really full, it's a bit of a pain closing the lid. Okay, 3705. really like these pinky colours. I think those are going to be on the flowers. And also there are some quite pinky tones in the, the white buildings. Which is something that I'm always fascinated about in the rendering of diamond paintings. And just sort of psychologically how we view colour because I know that those buildings are white because I know what Santorini looks like. Um, but of course, when you look at something in real life, if, if a white building has got a sort of orangey pink sunlight on it, it's going to look orangey pink. And that's what the... But it's amazing how your brain can kind of correct that. So then when I go to diamond paint it and the drills are pink, I'm sort of surprised. I still expect them to be white. I worked on a Chuck Pinson painting called um, Skating by Twilight before Christmas, which I have up in the house as part of our Christmas decorations. Well, it went up as part of our Christmas decorations, and for reasons unknown, it is still up there, other than the fact that we have these really hard concrete walls. And my husband said after Christmas, let's just leave it up for a bit. 
and I think that was at least partially because he can't figure out how to get the nails out. <laughs> but anyway, so that is um, a snow scene, but it's a snow scene at twilight, as the name suggests. So everything is bathed in this pinky purple light, and there is no white in that painting. There's not even any kind of greys, light blues, things like that that you might associate with snow. It's all purples and pinks, and it's just the reflection of the sun. And I love how your brain can just correct that and know that it's showing you snow, even though it doesn't look anything like what we think of snow as looking like. I think it's a common misunderstanding I've seen as well with, with people who maybe haven't thought about that um, and just haven't considered that. So I've seen people in groups, sun painting groups, have customs rendered and they've got you know, something like, I don't know, a, a dog or a person, and it's in a particular kind of light. I'm just sort of vaguely organising the order of these as I go. Um, so like, you know, a person with maybe a more orangey skin because they're in a sunset kind of light, or a dog which we would think of as a black dog, but maybe they're caught in the sun and a lot of their skin's brown, um, their fur's brown, maybe even shades of purple, that kind of thing. And I see people get their custom paintings and feel disappointed because they don't really understand why those colours are in there. But then if they trust the process and go through and complete it, it's, it's all those colours that really give you the depth of shading that, that makes a picture look really good. interesting to me anyway. When I was in university I studied linguistics quite a bit because I did a French degree and one of the things that I really enjoyed in linguistics was oh, sticking this on my hand, I did a paper on sociolinguistics and I think it was under sociolinguistics anyway, it was either that or psych psycholinguistics. Anyway, I digress, as I often do. The point is, it was talking about how we perceive colour, how do we know that... Oh, oh great. I think only one or two went overboard, so don't worry too much, but that's the reason for the tray. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so how can we know that when I say the colour red, that I mean the same thing by it as you do? Issues like colour blindness aside, but obviously make it a bit more complicated for some people. Um, and the thing with languages is, not all languages have the same number of colours. I mean, in English, we actually have quite a wide range of colour names. Um, but there are some languages where there are far fewer colours, colour names. Sometimes even, you know, just a handful of colour names. And it was, it was, whether you still see with your eye the same range of colours, if you're only going to attribute those colours to certain, to a more limited number of colour names. Anyway. As I said, I found that interesting. This is going nice and quickly. Only 40 colours in this painting, which, because I'm used to doing highly detailed paintings from places like Diamond Art Club and Dreamer Designs, it doesn't look like that many to me. <laughs> I like paintings with lots and lots of colours because I do get bored easily. So yeah, this will be interesting. I love DMC 550. Very pretty. I think that's a popular one with lots of people.
be interested to know if anyone else kits up their paintings in a similar way to me or if anyone has any tips or ideas for ways to make it better. I'm still a relative newbie to diamond painting. I only actually started last April, but I have packed a lot of diamond painting into the intervening year. I don't think I've ever had more than a couple of days off since. One of the paintings I plan to do on this channel at some point, in fact, is to get out all of the paintings that I've done because I love watching like year in review type paintings with other content creators. I think I've done about 11 or 12 now. I'm not loads, but I thought it would be interesting to run through that at some time. This tray, by the way, for anyone who's wandering in the UK, because they're a little less familiar here, is the Bella Arts and Nicole tray. And I used to see them mentioned all the time in diamond painting Facebook groups, where a lot of the members are American, because they're an American company. And they're quite sought after, so the company releases trays, I think, once, once or twice. I don't know, definitely once a week at a certain time. And if the colours they're doing that week are particularly popular, they can sell out really quickly. So you have to watch out for that time. I think it was either 6 or 7 o'clock GMT, if I remember right. And be ready to go and put them in your cart and check out straight away, because you just don't know how long they're going to stay in stock. And, got to be honest, it wasn't cheap <laughs> to get some to try. I got a set with this one large tray, which also comes with a stopper and a cover, um, and two small trays. And I think the set costs around £20, which I suppose isn't bad for free good quality trays, but then postage to the UK, as it so often is, was a bit of a killer. Um, I think the whole order ended up costing me about £33. <coughs> it only took three or four weeks to get to me, which isn't bad at all. I did have a bit of a panic when the tracking seemed to suggest it was in the UK really quickly and then it just it disappeared into a black hole on the Royal Mail tracking website. But I think that tracking was wrong and it hadn't left the US and I don't know, I don't understand these things but when it eventually said more clearly it was in the UK it then arrived very quickly. Anyway, they're great. There's two tray sets that I really like so far. It's these and Hatfield Designs on Etsy, which is a UK company. And they're the only ones I've found so far I just don't want to come out. Um, that both line up the drills nicely and have a good spout that makes it easy to pour things out without spilling them everywhere. And also have a lid, although I don't actually tend to use that that often. So, I'm using these a lot at the moment just because they're newer. But I do really, really like them. So yeah, if you're looking to treat yourself to something in the UK and you've seen people talk about these trays, I mean, I, I would recommend them. I haven't actually used them for rounds yet, mind you. So it'll be interesting to see how the drills line up, because I do find some trays that I have work better for rounds or squares, or vice versa. This, by the way, is one of our two ABs that we have with the kit. Hopefully you can see that. I think the glare's really bad when I bring things up close. 
Sarah. If anyone watching this doesn't know, AB drill stands for Aurora Borealis. And what it means is that the drills have a special coating on top that just reflects light. And they tend to be used just for accents within the painting. And they add some really pretty sparkle. Right, so that's all my small bags. Let's see what we're left with. So. the ones that are definitely destined for the bigger tubs so that would be that one that one and I guess these I mean the tubs aren't going to be filled very much but that's okay and then how many distinct colours have I got left so I've got one, two three, four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of these mid size containers and one extra large one. Hmm, interesting. So, do I use this? You can figure out which one of these is the biggest. Maybe I'll put that in one of these large ones so then I think I just need to fit drills into another three of the smaller containers if my maths is right and I haven't got myself confused maybe that one can go in a big container so this looks like the smaller end so let's get these into small containers. So if there's one thing I haven't done in my video so far is is introduce myself. Um, so I'm Kat, I live in Oxford in the UK with my husband and my son and as I said earlier I got into diamond painting about a year ago so a friend had mentioned it as something that she did and I just thought yeah that sounds alright and did the typical thing that a lot of people do, ordered a couple of cheap paintings on Amazon quickly got obsessed as many of us do started going on youtube learning about how it all worked i realized pretty quickly that you kind of get what you pay for if you can manage to get a better quality larger painting that's been rendered more precisely it will add to the experience so i discovered companies like diamond art club and kind of have them look back i think the reason diamond painting appeals to me is because I love doing creative things but I don't think I am a particularly creative person so I love the fact that with diamond painting I can make a really pretty thing that looks really artistic and lovely but I don't actually need to be creative to do that I just follow the instructions I also used to do cross stitch a lot when I was younger which is obviously a very similar sort of thing. And I did that for years, on and off, really enjoyed it. But then I had some health issues, some muscular issues that made it quite hard, this sort of repetitive 
up, I'm measuring my shoulder to stitch. The kind of seat I needed to sit in to do it comfortably wasn't great for other areas of me, so I just haven't done that much in years now. But diamond painting, I can work in a different area. I don't have to do the same motion. And with a bit of effort to set up a comfortable working area, I, I can diamond paint for a long time. Right, I'm just going to do a quick check that I've worked this out properly again. So, oh, if I take out the small ones, I've got my five colours that are going in the big ones. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of these boxes, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. I think we've worked out. One of these containers is not like the others. This one is a little bit bigger, so I'm going to say this container looks the biggest of these. And stick that one in there. Great number of drills. Really useful. Some of the catches on these aren't great. That's a bit a bit too loose. I do find that sometimes some of them get too loose and I have to chuck them away and eventually I will probably need to get another container set to replace the ones that I've had to lose. But I've still got plenty for now. really gone quite quickly. I enjoy kitting up though. I can do kitting up for hours, but I'm not so keen on kitting down. <laughs> Fiddly bits like kicking stickers off and storing my spare drills because I'm paranoid that I'll really regret it if I don't. Just living in the UK and mainly doing paintings by US companies. I know that they will replace drills if I run out, but to not have to wait for drills to come all the way from the US if I can avoid it. Mind you, I don't know if other people are doing this or it's just me being finicky, but because drills can be really different from really different companies, I've got so many different bags 
even if the same BMT numbers, because you know, if it's a, a cheapy painting, I'm not really going to want to use those drills on a diamond art club painting. If I if I can avoid it, if it's, I mean, one thing that's actually quite interesting is, so diamond art club have changed their drills recently, which a lot of people might be aware of. They have changed both their round and their square drills and they're gradually rolling them out. They're most of the way there now where all the new paintings are coming out with newer drills, restocks too. But if you buy something that's been in stock for a while, you know, it could be a mixed draw, it could be older drills. So these are older drills because I bought this back in last June. Um, and I find that the newer rounds look quite different to the older rounds. And ditto for the squares. It's a little bit different, it's just that they have a different number of facets. But the rounds, so on a recent round painting that I did, I had one colour which for some reason came with a mixture. So the drills provided in that one kit, you could see, were a mixture of the old round drills, which just sort of have like a kind of point on them and they're shiny and you can, I could just tell. And the newer drills, which are kind of matte, more matte with lots of facets. The colours were different. So I thought I wouldn't really even want to substitute one for the other. So now I'm going to have bags of new DAC drills, bags of old DAC drills, bags of other paintings drills, squares and rounds. Ugh, it's complicated. At some stage, maybe I won't feel like I need to keep them all, but... We're not there yet. Ah. If you can hear snoring in the background, I doubt you can just in case that is the cat <laughs> this is his deeply asleep time in the day not to be confused with four in the morning when he is wide awake to go. Almost there. So these containers are going to be mostly empty. But better that than overfilled. The empty out as you're going through the painting anyway, right? Last couple of colours.
you can just stick your own labels on and whatever works for different people is fine but I love the ease of these. a lot of that one and the last color done. The last things I'm going to do, I'll trim off this bit that's just rubbish now because I will keep this section and I'm just going to organise these in number order. Different people do things different ways. I, I know there is absolutely no need to keep them in that order. It's just me, it's just how I like to do it. I know lots of people like to organize by color or how the symbols group together. And there is no right way to do it. I just keep them in this order. I find that once I've done the first bit of the painting, I, I tend to just, I remember roughly where each symbol, so if I see the symbol on the canvas, I kind of have a mental image of, of where that colour is in my container and I can find it pretty easily. So I'm not too worried about organising them for that purpose. we go. All kitted up and ready to go. Hope you've enjoyed that video. Um, I'm going to have some fun learning how to edit this video properly and hopefully get this up on my on my YouTube soon. Um, if you haven't already, click like and subscribe. Please consider doing that. This is a really new channel, but I'm hoping to grow it. So your support really, really helps. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.